Welcome to Word Time. This is Coach Shelby with Coach for Christ. And this is Coach Shelby with Coach for Christ. And we have a question for you today. What is your bench press? Praise God. Now, that would probably get somebody's attention. And when they figure out what it's really all about, um, obviously, they would vacate the gym. But if our gyms were set up based around the Word of God and spiritual bench pressing, our gyms would be empty today. And the indication is, is the morality and the direction of a nation and the refusal of the few that that uh, uh, that God only needs a few, by the way. I just I, I said that and I heard the word Gideon. Now, Gideon had 300 soldiers and those had to be whittled down. Uh, there were some standards that God set in place to show his great glory for his great namesake. And if I remember correctly, there were several hundred thousand, uh, I believe it was Midianites. I might be wrong, but it doesn't matter. There were several hundred thousand of the enemy that encamped against them, but God only used 300. It was 300 and they had to break the vessels. You had to be a broken vessel in the hand of God to see victory. And so uh, we have few men that are willing to do this kind of workout. We can push through our CrossFit workouts. We can push through our cardio workouts. We can push through our bodybuilding, powerlifting workouts, but very, very few can push through a spiritual workout. There is no spiritual bench press. When I had a great bench press in the world carnally, and I did have that, I was uh, gifted probably in the upper body more than most, not the best, certainly, but more than most. And I could go in the weight room and I could sniff of a barbell. My bench press and incline would go up. Okay. Just, it just happened that way on the legs. I had to work a little bit. Uh, I worked hard on the upper body because you have a tendency to lean towards what you're gifted at. But if I had to bench press at that time in my life, spiritually, I was weaker than a kitten. I would have gotten crushed and I was being crushed. And part of that theology or understanding is, is that I thought I was in complete control of my life. I thought that uh, I could be goal oriented. I could set my standard high. And even if I didn't reach that level, I would be much higher than what I was. And I bragged about that. And we boasted about that through athletics, through football, through weightlifting, all of those things. But in that trusting in myself and my own abilities is obviously very, very clear in the word of God that I was a slave to the powers of darkness. I was a slave to the flesh. I was a slave to the system of this world. And I was a slave to Satan. And there's just no in between, guys. Either you're spiritually bench pressing, you're resisting, or you're being crushed and you're being caged, like a caged animal at the zoo. It's just that simple. So what is your bench press? Amen? Amen. So if you guys will go with us, uh, we will be coming out of the book of James chapter four today. We'll come out of the book of Ephesians chapter six. And then we'll come out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 with a lot of other verses sprinkled around them. So if you will, let's giddy up. Amen? Amen. Now, one thing that we must understand in James 4, 7 and 8, the very first place that we start is we've got to recognize the things that I've spoken of. We've got to repent before a thrice holy God, and we must submit ourselves to God. You cannot resist. You cannot spiritually lift weights or bench press until you're totally submitted to God. That means none of you, all of him. There's a saying out there, and I've been guilty of saying it, is less of me and more of you, God. And that's what is written uh, about John when he spoke of Jesus. But I really believe that proper translation is none of me and all of you. Because how can it be any of you if you're crucified with Christ? What's crucified is dead. And I also want to remind you that crucifixion is not a fast death. Many times people would hang for a week to two weeks, possibly even three weeks. It is quite possible to hang on a cross while their body is being drained of all bodily fluids and they're slowly dying. It's a so, so yeah, it's a process, it's a process. of crucifixion. crucifixion. I am crucified with Christ. I'm not there yet, Daily. but I'm not where I was. That's right. Amen? Amen. And I'm not proud of my spiritual bench press. Pride is an evil word. It calls Lucifer to become Satan, and I won't entertain that. I'm not proud of that, and I fail often. The difference is, as I climb back up, get back on my bench press, and go again. And you allow it to humble you. That's right, and it does humble. And I believe God allows it to humble because yes. if we succeeded spiritually in every de endeavor that we did, every every mountain that we rebuked and told to be cast into the sea, then what would that make us before God? What kind of trust would we have in God? We, we become arrogant, arrogant Christians. Mm, yeah, boastful. Now, I, I don't really want to go here, but we've got many, many preachers out there. And I say that word loosely for identification only, not uh, uh, for identification in the world, but not identification in the spirit, just like I identified spiritual bench pressing versus 
carnal bench pressing. But many will tell you that it, if this is not happening in your life and this sickness and disease is not happening and you don't have enough money, you're not given enough and you don't have enough faith. Sometimes that's true. But most of the time it's not because these men have an agenda to pad their pocketbook. They have an agenda for themselves and they speak things. And the Bible tells us that if a man of God or a prophet of God speaks something and it does not come to pass, that man is not hearing from God. It tells us that you can discern when you hear a message from a man, whether it's of God, whether it's written in the word of God, you can also discern by what's being left out. So there may be absolute truth that may be spoken in the word of God, but because they leave out vital uh, pieces of that puzzle, it would be like a football team snapping the ball without a quarterback in position. You see, it's not wrong to talk about all the other positions. But the position that handles the ball and deals the ball and calls the play is out of place. So it's in a false gospel of today, it would be easy if they identified themselves as a false gospel and they spoke words that were completely opposite of the word of God. But what we realize is they speak the word of God, but they skip over the parts that activate the word of God. Yes. Yeah. They require faith. They require tribulation. <laughs> they require affliction. That require bench pressing. See, that's where we're at today. And so you need to understand that. And if you're not wise by the Holy Spirit, you're not going to detect this. Some of you are posting messages and you're liking messages. And I know that because we only have social media for one purpose. And that purpose is to glorify God that some soul would hear this word. It's for no other reason. And some people are promoting these preachers and they haven't done a thorough investigation of what these preachers are preaching. They're preaching your best life now. Well, if this is your best life now, let me help you. You're headed straight to hell because this ain't the best life. This is not our home. The Bible never says that. Paul says, I'm a pilgrim passing through, that this life produces turmoil, tribulation, affliction. It's only a boot camp. It's not the destination. It's a passing point. It's a place to where we prepare ourselves. It's the, it's the spiritual bench press. And if you ain't working out, you ain't going to make it. That's good English. So submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Stop being double-minded. Stop playing both sides of the world. Stop living in the world and living for God. Some of us are doing both. Some of us, and I, I rebuke that. I'm not. Some of you are doing both. Some of you. Maybe I have at times, but I quickly discern because the spirit of God convicts me according to John 16, 8, and I'm quickly turned. I repent and turn back. That's the difference between a man of God and a pretender. That's between the difference between a man who's spiritually bench pressing and a man who's carnally bench pressing. That's the difference. Submitting to God, resisting the devil, resisting like iron. Strength comes through resistance. You understand that? If you're a weightlifter, you understand that there's micro tears in the muscle that create that muscle to, to begin to grow. Actually, the injury causes it to repair and to repair causes it to swell, to get harder, to get stronger. Recruit Just, more sacral meters, so yes. muscle fibers. Just like a broken bone recruits the minerals that it needs and even the calcium to calcify where that bone is broken. And they so say it's stronger in that area than any other area of the bone. It's the same way yeah. with working out. It's the same way of working out. So we resist the devil. Now, I need to, to say some things to you. To resist means to exert force and opposition. Resistance is applied for growth. And without resistance, you'll be crushed or destroyed. Could you imagine loading up a bench press with five or 600 pounds and not resisting it? If you've never had a weight drop on your chest before, you ain't ever felt nothing. If you ain't ever had a spiritual weight drop on your chest before and you couldn't bench press it and you said, oh God, I submit to you. I repent. I put my trust in you. I speak your word. Boom. And God removes it because he's the only spotter that can get that off of you. There's no other way. Somebody working out understands what I'm talking about. With the Lord, it makes it bearable too. Through the resistance. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But the resistance is necessary to, to press out the world that's in us yeah, to grow in the world. It's grow necessary in the world. to suppress and to put a foot Romans chapter six on the sin nature of man. Mm -hmm. It is necessary to resist the devil that he may flee from you. 
Okay. Now I want to show you something else in verse one of James chapter four, as we're teaching on spiritual bench pressing. Uh, one of those ways is the flesh. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even your lust that war in your members? It is the lust of our flesh that creates these wars and our inability and our lack of desire to submit to God and our inability is what I was trying to say to resist the devil. It's the war in the flesh. If you go down to verse four, it'll say um, the world, you adulterers and adulteresses. Know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God, hatred towards God, the enemy of God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And so as we see the flesh and the world already within this passage that we've read to you about bench pressing, resisting the devil. And un unfortunately, there's too many people who love the world. You see where your heart is there, your treasure will be also. There's too many people who love the things of the world. There's too many people that manipulate the word of God and say, God has given us this world to enjoy. They take the scripture that says God has given us all things to enjoy, their but, motives are wrong. but they've loaded their plate wrong. Yeah. There's no nutritional value in what you're putting in there, but the ability to kill, steal, and destroy. If you're a diabetic, you understand a little bit about what I just said. Yeah. What are your motives? Yes. Always examine yourself. What are your motives for anything? Now, of course, we have the flesh, the world, and the devil. And in verse seven, it says, resist the devil. Now, I, I wanna, I'm going to mention some scriptures for those who are interested. When I talk about the flesh, you can look at Galatians 5, 17, which, you know, talks about the, the war between the flesh and the spirit. The man of God who is repentant and born again and submitted to God, the evidence of that will be, will be the war. The war of uh, the, the pull of the world, of the sin nature, of the tactics of the devil, yet the hatred, even when you slip up and get caught in those places. The hatred you have towards that. God came to, I believe it's Exodus 15, 1 or 15, 3, I can't remember. But God came, he's a God of war. He declares war against the world, the devil, and your flesh. That's why he cannot glory in your flesh. Um, the, in, in 1 John, and I'm going to turn there with my fancy Coach Shaw iPad because he gets real excited when I mention that. 1 John, I believe it's 15. No, it can't be. Maybe it's sec, 1 John 2, 15. And if it's not, then I'll just say to heck with it, okay? I know I got it, but I'm not as skilled at this. Oh, yeah, there it is. Talking about the world, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It's just quite that simple. I mean, Christians that make these statements that, oh, I just love life. I just love, do is that really what you mean? Or is it that you love the, the ways of the world? I just love, because you just, listen, I know that I'm sometimes a little bit tight and high strung and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to tell you something, man. I just about want to puke about half of what I see in the world. Yeah. And half is a kind number. Uh, I just want to puke at the carnality of men who call themselves men of God and the way that they react. I want to puke when I look in the mirror sometimes and I realize the thought that went through my mind that should not be there. I judge myself continually. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, to examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. And I'm going to tell you something. I'd like to tell you, I really thought when I repented, I'd have it perfected by now. But the only thing I got is conviction. And if you don't have conviction, you're in trouble. You're in deep trouble because the spirit of God is not silent concerning your sin, concerning your love of the world, concerning your hatred towards God. Because if you love the world, you hate God. The Bible says so. I just read it to you. Take it up with God if you want to argue that. Amen. I like the way the NLT says it. Say it. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does... What pleases God will live forever. Wow. So it, it pretty much sums it up. And we're teaching, we, I, again, I rebuke times. that. <laughs> we're teaching our children to go to hell. Mm. We're teaching them to love the world. 
we're teaching them and I don't want to get sidetracked on this. I know we got Halloween coming. I know we mentioned Easter last week and all that kind of stuff that, yeah, I know exactly what I just mentioned. I did. Those are not godly holidays. No. Okay. And we're teaching them because we want them to enjoy what the world enjoys. Let me, let me share something with you. The world's going to hell. You, you, why don't you just keep that phrase locked up right there when you are teaching your child, it's okay because all of their classmates are doing it. That we are peculiar people. We don't fit in, never have. We will not fit in because we're with God and we're in a world that's contrary to God. We're in a world who hates God. We're in a world who thinks we're doing God a favor by a, a Bible app or a word that pops up on our phone that we have no understanding of the meaning or no love for that meaning, but we read it just in case God comes back that if some rapture takes place, as many are teaching, that I get to go to heaven. Wrong. The judge of the ages knows every thought. He knows who you are. A love for God will stand out like a sore thumb. I don't even know what that is. What a sore thumb, but you know, whatever. It'll stand out. You will stand out and there'll be no question on the day of judgment that you will be convicted guilty of being a man of God. If there is a question, you better get right while you have time. I know I'm a little wound up, but I'm sick and tired of the gym is full of men looking in the mirror at themselves of women wanting to show off what they got, saving nothing for their future husband or the husband they do have. No respect, no respect whatsoever. But there's no time for God. Oh, I'll work him in in my prayer to the gym. I'll work him in when my phone app in first period. I'll work him in. You declare what's most important in your life where your heart is, where your thoughts are, what you give your attention to, what you spend your time with. That declares where you are with God. This Mickey Mouse, limp-wristed Christianity, self-diagnosed Christianity is like a man going into surgery, giving himself anesthesia. That's it's that. foolishness, Jesus stupid, and not boy. possible. Say it again. Jesus is my homeboy. <laughs> yeah, he's your homeboy, all right. But you ain't in his gang. And you will be destroyed if that's your attitude about Jesus. Jesus is thrice holy. Jesus is to be praised. Jesus is to we fall as dead at his feet. Master, Lord, Adonai, King of kings, Lord of righteousness, glorious God. If you don't have a fear, if your heart doesn't race at the mention of that name, you need to go back to the cross and repent. I tremble in fear of what I am, what I am before thrice holy God. Because I mentioned to you, the difference is that the struggle of the man that does not bench press does not care, but the man that, that is bench pressing and he realizes how weak he is, it convicts him and realizes he's not strong enough to make God's team. I hope you understand my lingo, nor will you ever be. So he must re repent, cry out. But the evidence of that is, is a hatred towards the world, the devil, and this flesh, this carnality. Get a little wrestled up here as we begin to wrestle. Philipsis, spiritual bench pressing. It's a Greek word. We usually use Hebrew, but I like this one. Pressure. It's mentioned uh, in the, by the word tribulation, I believe 21 times in the New Testament. It's mentioned by the word affliction 17 times. Philipsis, spiritual bench pressing. It doesn't mean that it's only listed here if you add that up 30 some odd times. What that means is that specific word is used. Mm -hmm. Wrestling. We spoke this with our team, Ephesians 6.10. Let me give you the common denominator again between, between James 4.7 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. In other words, surrender to God. Surrender to God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual host of wickedness in high places. The devil's tactics are to blind. And I'm going to go ahead and give someone the benefit of a doubt to blind the believer. Here's how the believer is blinded. By buying into the world, the flesh, the tactics of the devil, by using the world's tactics to fight, by being easily aroused, by being brought out. We played a particular team last week who used these tactics, and I'm not dumb enough to think that ours didn't do the same because I know what's in man and I have no confidence in him. 
We just, some people have a better way of hiding it. (laughs) Some people are more slick than others. But if you make your bed in hell, you cannot hide from God, said David. So no matter how you're doing it, it's going to be exposed one day by the light, all of it. But I'm going to tell you some of these tactics were being used, and it was quite simple, quite obvious. Even though I don't think people know why they do what they do, the devil knows. And because they have not spiritually bench pressed and spent that time with the Lord in repentance, because of that, they're being controlled like a puppet with strings on it. And they're being manipulated and used and have a complete ignorance of the things of the spirit. And they think they're in control. And so the the tactic of the devil here is to draw in that one who is saved to play with his weapons. Because if you play with the devil's weapons and you use his tactics, you're subject to his outcome, which means you lose. And it's very difficult for the, 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 to not want the spirit of slap to come upon you when someone curses at you. But the better way to handle it is to speak God's word back to the person who curses you. Back to the person who comes against you in whatever area, whatever way that is, if we would speak the word of God, those tactics would be destroyed. You're tormenting demons when you speak God's word because God's word is his son, the word that became flesh in John chapter 1.1. One, one. And he's still the word of God. And when you're speaking the word of God, you're speaking Yeshua, the son of the living God. There is no more powerful weapon in the world that can be used in this universe, anywhere in all of creation than God's word, which is the sword of the spirit. They're throwing slang at you. You're throwing the sword of the spirit, which never goes dull. Did you hear what I said? The sword of the spirit, which never goes dull. Now, We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Let me give you a little history here. When this was being written, it's funny how God will use something going on in the natural to show us what's going on in the spiritual, as I did with bench pressing. Paul was probably referring to wrestlers of that day as the Holy Spirit was inspiring him, Mm -hmm. just like he was referring to soldiers in their armor in this text, in this chapter. Okay. And when they would wrestle then, to give you a little clue, it was to the death or, or at a minimum to the blinding. Now, in today's society, we have a tendency to tap out and go get us a prescription. Ooh, <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah. We have a tendency to tap out and go to a counselor. We have a tendency to tap out. You see, when you're wrestling here against the devil and you refuse to spiritually bench press, you refuse to use the, the, the anointing of God through a relationship with God, through full submission to God, speaking the word of God under the unction of the Holy Spirit, you can't escape. You can't tap out. Because what, whatever tactic is, is allowed is a tactic of the enemy. And the devil's job is to blind you. And you might even say spiritual blindness. Spiritually blind. So we don't spiritually bench press. We become spiritually blind. And we continue to fight with those tactics that the devil wants. We entertain those, uh, those ideas in our mind. We listen to those conversations. Oh, hallelujah. I've been guilty. But the difference is I fall into conviction. The difference is I go back and repent, say, okay, God, I'm going to speak the word of God. I'm going to pray over this. I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to be transformed, Romans 12, 2, by the renewing of my mind, by the word of the living God. Lord God, I haven't arrived, but I'm not where I was. And that's the difference in a man of God who spiritually bench presses and a man that does not. The blinding of the enemy, using the enemy's uh, weapons causes blindness, John 10, 10 says the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus, but Jesus, but those who submit to Jesus, those who fight his way with the sword of the spirit, the word of God, their relationship with Christ because of repentance, who are filled with the Holy Ghost, but these will destroy the works of the devil. He come to give us life and give it to us abundantly. That's not a new house, a new car, more money in your pocket. That means freedom from the tactics of the devil, from the enemy. That means that when the devil comes in, it's an opportunity to grow in your faith. Most people suppress back, back, back. And when the symptoms stop because they become numb to the things of uh, uh, of the enemy, they think that they've won, but they're in the very cage, the, the jail cell that the Satan has backed them into that God never intended you to be in. I know there's not many people know what I'm talking about. That's okay. I'm talking to one. I'm talking to one. Now, to verify this, if you were wrestling, if you were picked and you were thrown into the Coliseum 
and you had to wrestle a Goliath, someone that's five foot taller than you, weighs you about two or 300 pounds. And you knew that the only way out was there's no tapping out. The only chance you had was to fight. Would you fight? Or would you just lay there and say, get it over with, kill me, gouge my eyes out? He's a spiritual coward. I would fight. He might be bigger, stronger, and faster, all of these things, but I have a word from God that's able. I said, I have a word from God that's able. And even in the natural realm, if this were the case and you, there were no, we weren't even talking about spiritual and you knew there was no way out of it, you would fight. You would fight a mountain lion for your child. Even though that mountain lion may rip you to pieces, you would stand in the gap. You would fight a king cobra. You would fight a bear for your spouse. And if you wouldn't, oh my Lord, you got, you got other problems. Knowing that that's an impossible victory. It's impossible to win that in the natural. You would fight. That we have no understanding of things of spirit. There's no fight in us. Mm -hmm. There's no workout in us. There's no bench pressing in us. There's no resisting the devil at all. Oh God, take it off of me. Take it off of you. Listen, you got the wrong spotter and God don't spot like that. Because when I spot you, my deal is lift it or wear it. Yeah, I'll get it off of you as soon as you get your reps. We got too many people trying to lift the bar off. Now, now you're going to resist that. Now, you're going to get parallel in the squat. Now, you, you, hey, no, it hurts. Are you kidding me? This is spiritual warfare we're talking about. Yeah, sometimes you, I got some scars, man. Not some you can't see. Do what? Something quick. They want everybody to do something for them and, or God to do something for them, but they don't want to put the work in for oh, the you mean, Lord. Oh, you mean like this? Pray for me, brother. Uh, Lord, set yeah, her free, you get her off that bench press. Yeah, why don't you fight? We're not making fun of prayer for each other. No. But those who rely on others to do all the bench pressing. All the bench pressing and don't do any work and spiritual fighting themselves. That doesn't help you. It doesn't help you. Yeah, or that person. In 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, we're still talking about being blinded because you can't get out of this wrestling match. And even though you don't know you've been wrestling, you really got some, I mean, that. You're blind spiritually. That's why the people don't understand what I'm talking about. They've already been blinded. The enemy's already taken their eyesight in the spirit realm. They can't even see the agenda, what's going on in the world. Prophecy being fulfilled for our very eyes before the return of Christ. They can't see it. They think that America's all oh, blessed and highly favored. We're a Christian nation. And we'll be celebrating Halloween because Jesus oh, is so wow. happy when my son and daughter dress up like demons. Oh, they dress up oh, like angels. angels. Well, we just want to fit in. So we'll just be angels. That way we can be holy. Even though this is the day of the oh, dead, and one of the most demonic nights in the world, more seances that night than any other, more animal sacrifices and human sacrifices. If you study that out, you won't find that on the media, by the way. Trick or treat was speaking to evil spirits. Give them candy so they don't come in and demonize you. You're already demonized. I'm accepting it. Study to show yourself approved. Get into the word of God. But my son thinks it's it. My daughter, my, they, 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 we'll send him to hell then. Well, whatever. I, I mean, you know, you, you're you going to answer to God for it. The blood is on your hands. We're not called to fit into the world. We're called to be men and women of God. We're called to raise them up in the ways of God. That's it. How about have a Bible study? Oh, God, no, no, you are just, you're just such a stick in the mud coach. Bible study, everybody else is partying. <laughs> Shows our hatred for yeah. the word of God. We would rather do the things of the world than sit down and get in the word of God and get on our knees and teach our sons and daughters to pray. How about hand out Bibles? When the, yeah, how about stand the, the street? kids come in to mic it up door. and start. My it, dad it, used to make us do that when we were little. Uh, you're free to use this channel if you want to mic this up, put a speaker on your porch Halloween night. Yeah. And blast it. I used to have kids at the last school I was at. Or like hay rides and they'd go in and play a spiritual Christian music, you know, back mm -hmm. when I was young, you know, it doesn't sound Christian now, but anyways. Um, and we'd go around and the pastor would be praying and all of us would be singing praise and worship music on a hay ride. While all the trick-or-treaters are going door-to-door. -door. They didn't like us, but 
Praise the Lord, it was fun. <laughs> I used to have kids what run around with their, their boom boxes. When I was a teenager, we enjoyed this. there was a lot of teenagers that enjoyed doing that. We didn't want to go trick or treating. We knew it was evil. Nowadays people just accept it. Yeah. Oh, you're so cute. You're just become spiritually angel. numb to this to the I'm guilty of it. Of I dress my own sons as uh dis <laughs> disciples. Yeah. Now, if you want to dress Lord up as a disciple and go witness to everybody, hey, I think that's a different hey, that's animal. that's cool. That's a different animal. Yeah. But, anyway, but anyway, I'm going to get off that. Second Anyways. Corinthians 4, 3, and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hidden to them that are lost. Now, watch this. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. They're blind. The God of this world has blinded them. And I, this troubled me years ago when I studied this out. And I said, Lord, how is it their fault if they're blind? And he said, blindness is a choice. Yeah. It's choosing not to spiritually work out. It's choosing not to submit to God. The spirit of God draws all men. And I personally believe Romans 12, 3 says, every man's given the measure of faith. God has already given every man the amount of faith they need to believe. And they choose to plant that faith and let it grow. Or they choose to reject it and become blind by the enemy. It's choosing to ignore that drawing of the Lord inside of you that causes you to think. Refusing God's way. I should pick up that word and read it. Oh, not today. Refusing God's way, God's word, God's son. Thinking you can win carnally. Yeah. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 2 Corinthians 10, 4. But they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And I'm telling you, war is never comfortable. It never, it is, it is never a place to enjoy. There will not be any wars in the kingdom of God one day when Jesus comes to rule this place and sets his throne up in Jerusalem. There will be no more. He will govern and he will rule this world. It will be no more. But until he does, we are at war, guys going through it, it purifies you a little bit more and more. It's the goodness of God to bring us close to him the Lord. through these wars. Less, less of me yet, as I said, none of me, no world, no flesh, no devil allowed. And when they slip in, I recognize them because I'm not used to them. Did you hear that? Some people are used to sitting on the couch eating popcorn with demons because they're nice to you because they gratify the lust of your flesh. It is written what the lust of the flesh is. Get into Galatians chapter five. For God who commanded the light. And I want to I expose this real quick. I want to say this. For God in 2 Corinthians four and six. I don't know why I put there exactly. But for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Watch this. The light has shone. The light, you've, I'm sure you've walked into a room before and flipped a switch in an old house or a shed and you saw critters scatter, whether it be mice, whether it be cockroaches or whatever it was. The light exposes things. Watch this, John 3, 19 through 21. You all know 316. We learned that one in Bible school, but we do an injustice to our children by not teaching the rest of the, the worst. This, these, these letters were not broken up. They were letters. And you can't understand the context of the message by pulling a sentence out of the middle. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. Absolutely, he's done his part. Now let's go to verse 19. This is the condemnation. Here it comes. That light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Jesus is that light. And any man who's filled with the spirit of God who's born again and repented has the light of the gospel in them and the salt of the earth, which means they change the flavor of stuff, which means they sting and burn when they come upon a wound. Wounded are those who are living in sin. Oh, you fit right in. If you do, go back to point A again, which is the cross of Christ. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deed should be reproved or exposed. But he that does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Now watch this again. For the one that does evil in verse 20 hates the light. He does not come to the light because his deeds will be exposed. Too ignorant to realize the devil has blinded him and made him think that God can't see what he's doing. Now, we know that the local church can't see. We know they're blind because the church is filled with compromise. It's filled with sexual immorality. It's filled with, with uh, celebrating these holidays and things that God hates. The blind. You can't have a little bit of disobedience and, and, just, and still be obedient. But the man of God, you, the one who spiritually bench presses, but he that does truth comes to the light. 
that his deeds may be manifest. Now, some of those deeds may be ugly, but they are manifest. That's what I've been speaking to you about. I haven't been speaking to you about sinless perfection. What I've told you is that when the man goes to spiritually bench press, he finds out exactly where he is. And sometimes I'm lacking, but that lacking causes me to continue and surrender to God continually continually. And I shouldn't be tomorrow where I am today. It causes me to grow because God will not allow me to exalt myself. He will not allow me to win these battles without him, because in doing so, I will condemn my own soul if he were to allow that. The battle is within. The war is the spirit of God coming against you, your flesh, the world, and the devil. And I'm not so sure it's not in that order, but the order really doesn't matter that we come to the light, that our deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Listen, my brother and sister, if this seemed hard to you, the hardest thing you'll ever hear is depart from me. I never knew you. This ain't hard. We care enough to speak. We care enough to continue and we're going to do it as long as God has put breath in our lungs. And we're not going to ever put ourselves above anyone else because we need the same forgiveness and blood. The same word that we're speaking is the word that is convicting us. So you need to understand that. And if you didn't stay to the end of this video, then you will probably have already formed your opinion and gone out because that just exp exposes exactly which one, which manner, who you serve. If you can't see these things, then you need to go back to the cross and ask the light to come in you. If you can't see that this world, it seems like there's more that we can't do than we can do with the world because the world is evil. It's headed to hell and the days are going dark as prophesied in the word of God. We're seeing it. We're seeing the persecution of the church to a level we've never seen. And you say that my church is not being persecuted. We'll find out what your church is doing. Because if demons are getting cast out, people are getting set free and people are getting saved, prison doors are popping open, I assure you, your church is going to be persecuted. Because no one has a problem with you mentioning Jesus with a little J or Jesus. But they have a problem when you mention the King of Kings and the Lord of Glory, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, to where all demons bow their knee. They have a problem with that. And if you don't believe that, and you think you're in a place where you're safe because you've gotten away with sharing a word of the day, then I ask you to, to speak in detail against sin. Speak the Lamb of God, the destruction and the desire and the need for repentance in every soul that you speak to. I guarantee you, you will face opposition. Because it's okay to in some places talk about Jesus because we're a religious good place. But it's not okay when you break it down what is necessary to be saved. Oh, come up the altar. Repeat this after me. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of souls headed to hell who have said the prayer after a preacher. How do I know that? Because the tree is known by its fruit in Matthew chapter 7. And I see what's entertained immediately after that prayer. I see that there's no separation, no consecration. There's no tribulation. There's no affliction, which is guaranteed. It's not suggested. It is spoken in the Bible. It will happen to the man or woman of God. It's not fun. I'm not looking forward to it, but it's just a fact. It's just a fact. Jesus said it and he don't lie. You're going to have to make up your mind who your Jesus is. Is it another Jesus or is it the Jesus of the word of God? Let's go get a spiritual workout in. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Send this message around the world. Hate us, love us, whatever. Repent. Put your trust in Jesus, not us. Amen. Amen. God bless. God bless you.